but it's not passive belief. You're creating in the world every single day the version of you that you want to become. And it's like believing so much for yourself that you can let people be wrong about you. That you know that the people who are going to push you in the direction that you want to go 100% absolutely exist, and you might not have met them yet. Hi, and welcome to the Stethoscopes to Swaddles podcast, episode number 82. Today on the podcast, I want to continue a conversation that we had last week, and this time I want to talk about how to change your life. So last week, we talked a little bit about awareness and celebration, and the reason I wanted to actually bring that episode first was to kind of just like reintroduce you guys to thought awareness, awareness of your thoughts, awareness of how you're showing up in the world, because that is the first step of changing your life. I like to think about it like if you look at your life and you think, okay, there's something I want to change. Let's say you want to change your job or let's say you want to change your career trajectory or the trajectory of your marriage or how you're showing up as a mom or a friend. Whatever aspect of your life you want to change, the first step is to have awareness like, oh, there's this thing I don't like and I want it to be different. Hey, mama. You deserve a life free of overwhelm and burnout. Welcome to the Stethoscopes to Swaddles podcast. I'm your host, life and mindset coach, Shiro Bergbauer. I'm also a wife, mom, and CRNA. This is the podcast for high-achieving mamas in medicine like you and I. Together, we'll learn how to navigate the ups and downs of working motherhood. If you're looking to thrive in your relationships and overcome overwhelm in your motherhood, marriage, and medicine, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Stethoscopes to Swaddles podcast. One of the things that is important is how a lot of us, for example, like don't really pay attention to what is going on in our mind. I was listening to Brooke Castillo talking about kind of the same topic, which was so funny because the universe always delivers in its own interesting way. And she was just talking about like the tools that she's used to change her own life, which was interesting when I looked at my show notes. It was kind of echoing that, which reminds me that, you know, the work that we put out in the world as coaches, as learners, as people trying to do our work in the world There are kind of universal beliefs, and we just understand them in our own different ways. And so what she was saying was the fact that, like, you know, we have, like, a house, right? Like, if I told you to imagine what's inside your house, you kind of know, like, what's in your bedroom, you know, how many televisions do you have? Do you have a computer? Do you have a desktop? Do you have a laptop? Do you have an iPad? Do you have a phone? You know all of those things. Like, you kind of know what is in your house. And when you leave your house, you make sure that it's safe and protected. You lock the door. You turn on your alarm. If you have a ring doorbell, you have that. Um, You have any sort of monitor you have, right? And what Brooke Castillo was saying, and if you don't know who Brooke Castillo is, she is the founder of the Life Coach School, and her work changed my life. I will say that. And I just, like, love the way she teaches thought work and processing emotions and all of that jazz. So what she was saying was, like, if so many of us don't realize that it's actually more important for you to know what's going on in your mind than for you to know what's going on in your house. But if you think about it, a lot of the time, we don't pause to see what our mind is offering us, the input that's coming in. And so if you haven't listened to episode number 81, I actually want you to pause Go back and listen to episode 81 to give you some clarity on the topic of awareness. Because I think awareness, mental awareness, knowing what is going on in your brain is key for you to start enacting change in your life, right? Also, awareness of what's working in your life, what isn't working in your life, it's so important. And whatever school of thought that you, you know, have used to kind of do your own work, I personally like use a mixture of many things. I love the work of the Life Coach School. I love the work of Byron Katie. And that's really where a lot of the things that I share and have worked on myself come from those two schools of thought. And why I love 
And I'll just give you an example why I love the work of Byron Katie is because Byron Katie was the first person that I listened to that offered me this idea that just because my brain says something doesn't actually mean it's true. And I was like, wait, what? And I will actually, in the show notes, include my favorite Byron Katie book. It's called Loving What Is. I've actually done a couple of podcast episodes on that book. I think it's just so interesting because she just offered me the thought like, oh, I don't have to believe everything my brain says. Is that a thing? <laughs> like that level of self-inquiry and those four questions. And I'm going to tell you the four questions in case you're not familiar with uh, Byron Katie's work. I actually include that in the show notes. So the work of self-inquiry is asking four simple questions about each belief that causes us pain. And these four questions are one, is it true? Two, can you absolutely know that it's true? Three, how do you react when you believe that thought? And four, who would you be without the thoughts? And what Byron Katie's work actually does is after you answer this question, she gives you this challenge to come around up with a turnaround sentence. So let's say you believe, and I've shared this in the last example, my husband doesn't care about me. You could just actually just turn that question to, I don't care about him or I don't care about me. And that challenges you to really see your thoughts from that perspective and just help you create a different way of looking at things. And so why I love Byron Katie's work, again, is that she offers you this practice that it's like, first, you have to notice. And that is what awareness is, right? Like she asks you to notice, like, who upsets you? What upsets you? And why? So she asks you to think about a specific situation where you were angry, hurt, sad, or disappointed with somebody. And she asks you to step into that situation as a witness. Be there, name, notice, and feel the emotions, and find the reasons. Then you go into the next inquiry state, and you capture the thoughts that you have. And that requires you to actually write down these thoughts, and then then you go into inquiry, which is the four questions. You take one thought, and you answer the questions, and you allow the genuine answers that come up to you to arise. Then you turn it around. And in turnarounds, she gives you options like finding opposites, turning around to your statements, and then finding examples and giving you like, you know, what is the opposite of the original thought? And not every statement has many turnarounds, and she's very clear on that and, and also not forcing things that don't make any sense when you're doing the turnaround. But she actually gives you this worksheet called the Judge Your Neighbor Worksheet, which is a worksheet that my clients and I work together with. I'll also include that in the show notes. I think it's so important to just have that resource. Again, her website is called thework.com, and she has so many books and just so many things. The other thing, as far as awareness, that I have loved from Byron Katie's work is, again, a resource I use with my clients all the time is the different lists of emotions. I mean, there are so many emotions. And like, so the uncomfortable emotions, which is how you react or what happens when you believe a thought that, is, that doesn't serve you, there's like major categories. So angry, depressed, confused, helpless, indifferent, afraid, hurt, sad, or judgmental. And then in each category, she has like different names for each of these emotions. Like, I'll just give you like an example from the um, angry category. She shares like examples like enraged, malicious, infuriated, violent, vindictive, furious, repulsed, scornful, stubborn, mad, disrespectful, unpleasant. I mean, all the things. And then she gives you in the fourth question, which is who would you be without the thought? She gives you categories of emotions, which are open, loving, happy, interested, alive, positive, peaceful, strong, relaxed. And then again, under each section, she actually gives you even more emotions. So like, for example, under um, open, she gives you interested, receptive, accepting, kind, tolerant, understanding, connected, sympathetic. I mean, all the emotions. And for many of us, 
we don't actually sometimes have descriptors for these emotions. And so it's great to just have that. She also has an app that it's a mobile app. I believe it's 99 cents. It's literally amazing. And you can go in there and you can use that information. Byron's Katie's work is just amazing. And I just had to plug that in here because it is just just so eye-opening. Like, oh, you mean to say that I actually have not been paying attention to my brain? Like, I don't even know how many TVs are in my brain. I don't even know what color the couch in my brain is. What if I just stopped to notice, right? And one of the most important lessons, too, is knowing that the reasons we suffer or we go into protest is when we believe a thought that argues with what is in the present. Because when your mind is perfectly clear, what is what we want, right? We are in the present moment. We don't argue with reality. If you want reality to be different than what it is, then you're like arguing. You're like, well, things should be, shouldn't be this way. People should be nicer. People should be kinder. You know, children should be well behaved. And it's just like, oh, or my husband should agree with me, or I should be prettier, or I should be skinnier. But it's like, the reality is, I want the reality to be different, right? So we cause so much stress to ourselves because we are arguing with what is. And It doesn't mean that when we accept reality, we become passive because we don't know what is more empowering until we're willing to explore it. The one other thing that I wanted to share as far as mental awareness is the idea of staying in your own business. And Byron Katie says that there are only three kinds of business in the universe, mine, yours, and God's business. And again, for her, like her definition, whether or not you believe in God or the universe, for her, the word God means the reality, what is, right? Because it rules. So anything that is out of your control and my control and everyone else's control, that's God's business. And much of the reasons why we have so much stress in our lives is because we're so busy living out of our own business, right? It's like, oh, I want my husband to be happier or I want him to be an extrovert. And, oh, I'm so worried that there's an earthquake and I'm not minding my business. I'm actually in God's business, which is not my business, right? And just be aware that when you start having awareness of your thoughts, a thought is harmless until we believe it, right? It's not the thought or believing the thought that hurts us is when we become attached to the thought that causes us to suffer, So attaching to a thought actually means just believing that it's true without being in inquiry. And again, as I've talked to here before, I believe is just the same thought we've just attached to it for a longer period of time. So when you think about mental awareness of your thoughts, if you, for example, have a thought that my husband doesn't care, right? And you become so attached to that thought is because you actually believe in that thought. But thoughts are like, like the breeze or like the leaves on the trees or raindrops falling, they just appear, right? But if we go through inquiry, we can actually make friends with them, right? Like you don't walk around arguing with raindrops or the leaves or, right? You just, you're just aware that it is. And when you meet that with understanding, you actually have more curiosity to it. So I want to like invite you if you've never actually like questioned your thoughts to explore the work because it's great, amazing resource that Byron Katie has put out in the world. And I know I went off on a tangent about mental awareness, but I really wanted to drive that point home because I think in order for you to change your life and to be in awareness, it's important for you to like have this detachment from the thoughts that are in your life that are maybe causing you to have so much protest that you actually don't give your brain the space to process and be in inquiry versus when you could actually sit in inquiry, you may actually notice for yourself. You you don't always believe everything that your brain feeds you. Now, when you think about changing your life versus changing your feelings, one of the things when you start having mental awareness of the thoughts that you think predominantly is to notice the emotions, the feelings that come with those thoughts. So, for example, if you have a thought that you're not good enough, right, the emotion that comes with that is, you know, dejection or frustration or shame or whatever negative, uncomfortable emotion that may show up for you. 
you can just first notice that emotion and decide, like, do I want to overhaul my whole life and change every circumstance? Or do I want to just start noticing these feelings and maybe work on changing the thoughts that are causing the feelings? One of the things that I think is very important to know is that if you try to change the circumstances in your life before you actually go in inquiry and notice your thoughts and your feelings and your actions, you will be taking the same feelings with you. It's like when you are in a relationship and it ends and you don't ever explore how you showed up in that relationship, you're going to take the same emotions with you to the next one. Or like if you maybe have a house and I think about it like in the example, and this might be an extreme example, when they like they show hoarders, right? And you see these people that lived in this house and they have a ton of things and they come and they clean it and they like fix it up. And then the person goes to a new house until that person has had the support to deal with mental health struggles and the mindset behind the fact that they've been hoarding and over accumulating things. They're going to go to a brand new house and fill that new house with the same amount of stuff because they actually just changed the circumstance. They never changed their thoughts. They never changed their feelings. You just like tweaked the circumstance and traded it for the other. So if you are noticing that you're trying to change your life, let's say, for example, you're like, I want to lose weight. And you're like, I'm going to change my life and I'm going to stop eating carbs, for example, because this is actually from real life example for me. You're like, I'm going to stop eating carbs. And da, da, da. But the, really, all you've changed is the circumstance. You have never explored why is the result line of my model, why is that an amount of weight that I don't want to have? Like, why is it X amount of extra pounds, in my opinion? Because all you're changing is the circumstance. So you're not changing the thoughts that maybe lead you to overeating. You're not changing the thoughts that make you not be consistent with your workout. You're not changing the thoughts that are causing you to change your plans for what you were going to eat today. And I was actually thinking about it today. I was I was reading a, comp, a post about something and this person was like, I've tried this diet. I've tried this workout. I've tried all of this. It doesn't work. And I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds like me. <laughs> and what I realized is that this person is like, oh, I just need to change the circumstance. Like, can you give me a new diet that works? Or can you give me a new person to follow that works? And as I have been working on my own weight loss and health journey with my coach, Brittany. This is also a plug for Brittany. I'm going to include her information on the show notes. Brittany is a CRNA mom who also does, she's a weight loss co coach. She's um, Her program is called Weight Loss with Brittany. And as I've been doing that work, we've dug through so many emotions and thoughts that are actually the reasons why I will fall off protocol with my diet or not exercise or eat something that I hadn't said I was going to eat. I am not processing my urges. And so if I just change the circumstance, and again, working with Brittany was literally just changing a circumstance. I had started a program that I really like actually still think it's amazing right but I was like why is that when I get to Wednesday I don't want to eat any of the food on the plan I'm like changing working with Brittany has been so different for me because it's helped me realize oh it's these thoughts and like one time we were coaching recently and I had had this thought that I didn't like my assignment and I just did not appreciate this assignment and so I was angry and I ended up eating what I hadn't even planned on eating. It was like revenge eating. I don't know if you've ever done that. And I was trying to change the circumstance, but I wasn't changing my thoughts. And so now with that level of coaching, it's like understanding, okay, what are the thoughts that I believe that lead me into going off protocol? And sometimes it's like, I've been good. Like if I step on the scale and I've lost two pounds, I'm like, oh, I've been good. I can eat an extra such and such or, oh, I deserve this. And it's like when I don't ever follow those models and like look and look, I'll constantly change circumstance before I change my model and I understand it. So now I'm working on the part where I actually look at my model before I try to change anything. And going back to like even my relationship with my husband, when I realized that one, he didn't have to change a single thing in order for this marriage to be amazing, I then started understanding my model better because I was like, okay, how am I showing up? What am I thinking about him? What am I thinking about our marriage? What am I thinking about being a mom? Looking at it and just realizing, oh, this is the source of this result at the end of the day, 
of my model is, oh, the result of thinking these thoughts and having these feelings is not the marriage that I want to have. So then I looked at, changed, and had an intentional model, and I wrote down what I want my new marriage to look like. Then what would I be thinking and doing and feeling in order for those to be my results? And so I didn't try to change anything. I didn't try to change him. I didn't even try to change myself. I just tried to notice, have an understanding of compassion to my model, right? Because one... The goal here isn't to be perpetually happy. The goal here is to have a life that we feel all the feelings, we process our feelings, we we think through it, we're in emotional adulthood, we are not in victim mode, and then notice like how do I process those emotions before I make a decision to start a new thing, a new circumstance without unprocessed emotions, right? So Again, like I want you to think about the fact that like if you're continuously having the same situation in your life, like you're in situations like you're burnt out at your job and you switch from job to job and you're still feeling burnt out. One of the reasons is because you're actually not processing the emotions that are coming up, right? You're not recognizing what are the thoughts? What are the feelings? What are the actions? You're not taking back your power in those situations. So I want you to first understand like your mind is so powerful and how much power you have. So if you decide to change the circumstance before you actually notice your model, you're going to keep repeating the same. It's going to be a hamster wheel, right? So again, I might say like if you first even notice those uncomfortable emotions, and I talked about this in the last episode, it isn't like the easiest thing to like feel those feelings and be happy, right? It, you can keep wanting to change it so you can get to your joy faster. Like, oh, it's like, but how do I get happier? And it's like the level of how greed, like, I just want to be happy tomorrow. I don't want to suffer. I don't deserve this. It's been too long. And if you don't pause long enough to be like, oh, this is the thought. This is, this is actually my gateway thought, right? That leads me into the situation, right? Again, you can notice your models and still change and change the circumstance. But you go into the new circumstance with a brand new, fresh set of eyes that sees the thoughts, that sees the feelings, and decides to show up in a different way. So that's the first thing about awareness. The second thing in how to change your life is to have profound belief in what's possible for you. And how one way I like to think about like how I can change my life is that I reflect like being a college student. And then I look at the path from there to here. And I look at like how I used to like imagine, okay, I'm going to go to nursing school. I'm going to become a nurse. And then I was in nursing school and I met, I met a student nurse anesthetist and I was like, oh my God, her job looks so cool. And then I was like, oh, I want, I want to be that. And then I was like, you know, admiring that. And then I applied to school and then I got in. And then I was like, okay, I'm here now. And then I met like life coaches who were like changing the world. And I was like, wait, I want to be that. The examples were there, right? Like, so I built belief based on people having gone before me. I want to tell you something interesting. My mom found this like little card that I had written my name when I was in nursing school. And behind it, I had written CRNA. And that little index card, it was an index card, and I had probably, it was one of my, like, books, my mom had found it. It always reminds me of the level of belief that I had for myself to become a CRNA. It always reminds me that even before I saw it in reality, it's what Wayne Dyer says, you believe and then you see, right? I had so much belief that I could be that person. So I want you to imagine a situation in your life that you want to be different, whether it's your relationship with your spouse, whether it's your relationship with your kid, your relationship with your family, your job, your career, your health, your love life, whatever it is. I want you to like immerse yourself into believing in what's possible. So I want you to just like sit down and imagine it's a year from now and I've changed my thoughts and my feelings, and this is the new circumstance I'm, I'm in. What am I feeling? What am I thinking, right? Then sit in that belief and practice it every day. It's almost like the idea of fake it till you make it. 
when I look at my coaching business a year ago when I fully launched and went all in and opened the doors to paid coaching clients, and now I'm like, wow, like I got to thank past me for believing that today's version of me would be available, the level of results that my clients have had. I had no evidence for it, right? I just had belief in what's possible. And the reason my life has changed is because I was able to like look to the future with a brand new set of eyes and believe wholeheartedly that I could create those results. I looked into the future and I knew that the relationships that I wanted to have, the friendships that I wanted to have, how I wanted to show up in the world, the kind of person I was going to be, it required a level of thinking and action that was different from how I was a year ago. And so I set out on this journey to first find my authentic self, to shed that old identity of who I had been and the people in my life who saw me for that person and decide this is exactly who I want to be. And it's always a work in progress. And of course, sometimes you'll slip into old you and that's okay. But I have such profound belief in what's possible for me as a person, as a woman, as a mother, as a wife, as a friend, as a daughter, as a sister, I have so much belief for the highest version of myself. So I want you to like just look at your life right now and imagine what you want to be in your life. What are the results that you want to have in your life? What do you want to create? What does that look like? What are the predominant thoughts you're going to have to believe every single day to have that life? right? Because right now, it might not even look feasible. It might not even look normal. And I always borrow from those who have gone before me. I When I listened to Jamie Kern Lima, I listened to We Should All Be Millionaires. When I listened to these books and these women who have like just changed the world, when I listened to Viola Davis's memoir, I was like, wow, like, they are such examples of what's truly possible if I'm willing to step out of my own way. Like, get out of your own way, believe in yourself, show up every day. And, you know, we are living in a time where everybody is like affirmations and mantras and da da da. da. Here's the thing mantras don't work unless you do. And the level of work that's required for you to change your life is to be in such solid belief. But it's not passive belief. You're creating in the world every single day the version of you that you want to become. And it's like believing so much for yourself that you can let people be wrong about you. That you know that the people who are going to push you in the direction that you want to go 100% absolutely exist. And you might not have met them yet. Like I look at myself. I had been listening to a podcast that somebody, actually Corrine Crabtree, who is a weight loss coach, had recommended this podcast to me on Clubhouse when I had asked her a question about becoming a life coach. And she was like, you need to listen to this podcast called Make Money as a Life Coach. So I had started listening to Stacey Bayman's podcast, Make Money as a Life Coach. And I've been listening to it for a few months. And I still remember I was on call and I was on a break and I walked into the break room and she introduced the panel that was going to be on her podcast. And she was like, and Brig Johnson is a nurse anesthetist. And funny enough, I don't even think she could pronounce the name correctly. But I was like, wait, what? And I sat down and I listened to Brig tell her story. And it was such a profound story of failing, getting up, trying again. Literally went to the Googles, Googled Brig Johnson, realized we had mutual friends, friended her on Facebook, started following her work, sent her a message. And I'm like, I'm just fangirling you over here. And I just want you to know, like, you're amazing. Started following her work, ended up signing to work with Brig as my one-on-one coach. We are now a year and two months deep in our relationship. My life is forever changed because I listened to that podcast episode. And so you just don't even know. Like, Brig, I, like, Two years ago was not even in my periphery when I started this podcast. I didn't even know what I wanted to do with starting this podcast. Like, I used to tell people, like, I think I want to be a life coach. But I didn't even, like, conceptualize it, right? And so now, like, in the world that I've gone into, I have stepped into this world where I've met these amazing mentors. Like, I was just talking to Samantha Siffring, who is a business coach. And I was just thinking, like, wow, like, these people didn't even exist in my reality when I started my business when I launched a a course like so you just don't know what the examples are out there 
And you have to be willing to just put yourself out there. And belief in what's possible is so important because it there's so much possibility for our lives. And I'm not saying this in like a woo-woo fruity way, but I totally believe that we have so much possible for ourselves if we're just willing to get out of our own ways, have clarity about who we are and how we want to show up in the world and things just start falling in place. And so when you see those examples, I used to think like when I see these women out talking about how much money they're making and I would be like, why do they talk about how much money they make? And now I'm like, I'm so glad they talk about how much money they make because they make it possible to realize, oh, I can do that too. When women talk about like leaving healthcare or like stepping out and like exploring entrepreneurship, I used to be like, oh my God, that is so scary. And now I'm thinking, it's so good that they talked about doing that scary thing because it made me realize I wasn't the only one that could start a business and still have a full-time job, right? So believe in what's possible. There's so much out there that provides us the evidence if we're looking for it. Because if you want to see what is not possible, you will see it also, right? I always tell the thing like when the first time I saw a red Tesla, I'd never seen one before. And I kid you not, within a week, I had seen like seven of them. And the reason being is that your brain is wired for that cognitive bias. So when you see what's possible, you will continue to see what's possible. If you seek what's impossible, 100% you will see what's impossible, right? Because it's what you pay your attention to. The third thing, which is last but not least, on how to change your life is to commit to changing yourself and create an impact in the world. However big or small your impact is going to be, having that commitment to change yourself, not just so that it can benefit you, but that it can make the world a better place. I think about this when I think when I launched this podcast, my blog, I just wanted to talk to moms, explore matricents and the transition from going into working motherhood and transitioning out of maternity leave and going back and exclusively pumping and all of that. And every person that would have a baby after me that I knew, I would always try to reach out and like offer them support. And what I didn't realize at the time is that I was just like building my impact for other people in kind of a selfish way, because for me, it was also I just wanted to hold space for other women in a way that maybe was not available to me. And I always think about a conversation I had with my girlfriend about postpartum mental health, and she was so transparent about her struggles. And that was like a catalyst for me to, one, get help, two, normalize talking about mental health postpartum, and three, be an anchor for any other woman that might have gone through it. So when I decided that I was going to commit to changing myself, it wasn't this like big, profound, like, oh, my God, I'm going to change my life. It was almost like I just want to be a better version of myself every single day. So it's quite possible that people will only know the present version of you. It's quite possible that you've not met people who have an awareness of your new self. But I want to offer you this because it's true for me in my life. The number of people I have met since I became a coach, right? They have that, the identity of me that they have is that of being a life coach. There are people in my life that probably look at me and they're like, who is she coaching and what is she coaching? Like, that doesn't even make sense. And it's okay because that self-concept is who they have of me. So I'm not trying to... Now tell them, like, look at my new self-concept. I'm a coach. I'm going to a new world in a new desert with people who are thirsty and saying, listen, I have water. You want water? Come on. So when you decide to change yourself and you impact the world, it is also not your business to go figure out what that impact is. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. I was telling her how she wants to write and she wants to share her story. And she's very like, what if I share the story and I don't know how to use Instagram and I don't know how to share the story and what is the story going to be and who is it going to impact? And I was telling her, you know, when we put out our stuff in the world that we've created to create impact, it is not our job to monitor its impact. It's going back to your business, other people's business and God's business. The monitoring of the impact is not your business. 
And one of the examples I shared with her is that sometimes I'll write copy for content on my social media and I'll write a post and I'm like, wow, this post is like, I'm talking to the person, I'm talking to this mom who's struggling and, you know, she's feeling a lot of shame and guilt and da, da, da. and I write this and it's like, it's like my, the body of work is just amazing. And then I put it out there and one person likes it. And I'm like, well, maybe it didn't land. And what I've learned is when I release the reins, it's like the best impact because then I'm not like babysitting the post like, oh, who is reading it? Did they read it? Did it make any sense? Did it add up? I'm just like, I put out the work and then it goes. And I will tell you the funniest thing is that I will put out content and nobody will like it. And then somebody will book a consultation with me and bring up that post in the consultation. Like, I remember when you wrote about this thing and I read it and I it like landed for me and I'm thinking, wow, and this person didn't even like interact with the post per se. They just read it and it impacted them and they made a decision that they wanted to be coaching clients and that was it. So when you put out your work in the world, it is not your job to figure out the impact that you're having. This is totally unrelated to changing your life, but I wanted to share it on here because I see it a lot with my friends in the medical field who are trying entrepreneurship. And I wanted to mention it here because for two reasons. First is many of us who, many of you, especially that listen to this podcast, have are at a level in your career where you make a great amount of money and you're thinking about going into entrepreneurship. And I'll probably do a full podcast episode on this because I think it's worth talking about. We, especially in anesthesia, are in a profession where failure could mean fatality, right? So failing is very much not in our vocabulary. So we go out in the world and we become entrepreneurs and we are so terrified of failing. We want everything to be perfect. We want everybody to like us and everybody to like our posts and da 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 and all the clients and the clients are just going to show up from out of the blues. And I just want to offer you this if you are exploring entrepreneurship, that failing is part of success as an entrepreneur. It's definitely not what we're conditioned in healthcare. We're not really allowed to fail because the nature of our work is that failing can cost somebody's lives. But in order for you to grow in whatever aspect you're changing your life, especially as an entrepreneur, you're going to have to welcome failure. You're going to have to be okay with not being perfect. I'm looking at all of you going into aesthetics, going into coaching, going into business and real estate. I'm looking at you and I want you to be aware that the more you're terrified of failing and the more you decide not to take action because of that, there are people in the world that are waiting for you to make an impact and you're not doing it because this thing is holding you back. Second, going back to the amount of money that we create in the world doing our healthcare jobs, it is very easy to dismiss the amount of money you're going to make as an entrepreneur. And I want to be honest with you that that is a very interesting transition going from making six figures in anesthesia to realizing it could be very difficult to make $1,000. And I want you to be aware that that is normal thinking, but question it. Appreciate every single dollar that your side gig, your hobby is bringing in, Have such reverence for making that money and the value you're creating in the world because it's making an impact. And so I want to leave you with that because I like it was on my heart to share it. I've had three conversations with three different entrepreneurs this week. And I was like, y'all, it's okay that this is hard because our trajectory in healthcare has always been you went to school, you made the grades. You got on the next level. You went and worked in the ICU. You had the best accolades in the ICU. You went to CRNA school. You were the A student. And then you decide to be an entrepreneur and it's not that straight of a path and you get discouraged and you quit before you even start. So if you're listening and you're considering going into entrepreneurship, it's okay to fail. You're going to fail. It's part of the process. Be open to it. So... That's all I have for you today. I wanted to recap the three things to do in order to change your life. And one is to practice awareness and live in inquiry. Two is to be in belief in what's possible. And three is to commit to change yourself 
and commit to impact the world. You are doing a great job and I hope you have an amazing week and I'll talk to you next week. Bye now. I'm Shira Bergbauer and you've been listening to the Stethoscopes to Swaddles podcast. New episodes are out every Monday. These episodes are created by me, Shira Bergbauer, and produced by Cassidy Mitchell. If you enjoyed this show or found it helpful, please rate it and review us on Apple Podcasts. If the concepts I share on this podcast resonate with you or you're ready to change your relationships and mindset, I can help you. If you'd like in-depth, personalized support, I'd love to invite you to apply for my Life and Mindset coaching program. Just imagine you and I every week working together as I teach you the tools to up-level your life. To book your free one-hour consultation call, go to www.stethoscopestoswaddles.com forward slash consultation. You're doing a great job, Mama. Have a great week. Bye now.